Chelsea Football Club will be playing in Europe next season. Those are the words of Mauricio Pochettino in Friday's press conference ahead of Chelsea against Bournemouth today, and that is music to my ears. But what I would like to know is when we say Europe, are we talking Champions League or you're more looking at Europa? So Poch, I know you're a big watcher of the channel. Please do me a favour, mate. Get in the comments section and specify exactly what you meant there. Um, do not say Conference League, for God's sake. Anyway, people, what's happening? Welcome back to the Joey Knight podcast. If you are not already at the end of this video, if you enjoy the content and you want to see more for myself, please do me a massive favour and hit that subscribe button. Also, click the bell so that you get notified every time one of my videos goes live. So, pretty positive start to the video, but let's get on to some good old negativity. Now, I'm joking, but we have got to talk about a few sort of negative stories that are coming out of Stamford Bridge right now. And when I say Stamford Bridge, do you know what? I don't even mean Stamford Bridge. I'm not suggesting for one moment that any of these stories are getting leaked by the club, but they are being reported in various media outlets. So, in this video, we're going to talk Reese James to Real Madrid. We're going to talk Enzo wanting to leave Chelsea. We're going to talk about the Mikhailo Mudrik situation and we are also going to talk about the news that we are hearing that apparently the likes of Chalabar, Matson, and Kukurea could be banished from the squad. But listen, we're literally only a few hours away now from Chelsea's team to face Bournemouth being revealed and because of that, some of these sort of rumours could be debunked straight away, you know, because if Kukurea or Matson are in that first team 11 or even on the bench, that pretty much means that this rumour was not true. But for what it's worth, I'm going to try and cover all of them and there is only one place to start and that is Reese James to Real Madrid. Right, there's two parts to this rumour and I am going to start off by addressing the first part which in my opinion is very likely true and that is that Real Madrid want Reese James. And who wouldn't want Reese James? Defensively he's brilliant, offensively he's brilliant, he's got an elite mentality and whether you like Chelsea or not, you cannot deny that when it comes to Reese James, we haven't even really scratched the surface of what we could potentially see from him. And the first thing that a lot of you lot will say to me in the comments is that you cannot hang your hat on Reece Reese James putting up respectable appearance numbers over the course of a 38 game season. He's always injured. He never makes it onto the pitch. And look, I'm not going to completely write that off and disregard it because what do I know? I'm not a doctor. I have no medical background, especially when it comes to football. But listen, if Reese James is to recover from his miserable recent injury record, he wouldn't be the first high profile player to do it. You know, I look at Luke Shaw at Man United. Obviously, he was in and out of the side with a lot of long layoffs over the course of a good three seasons or so. And then he became a mainstay in that Man United team. I remember being younger and feeling physically sick to my stomach when I saw that Aaron Ramsey leg break. And I remember at the time he was a young player and I thought, well, that's it now. He will never go on to fulfill the early potential that we had seen from him when Arsenal had first brought him in. And yes, he was out for well over a season and whatever and sort of in and out. But after that, he had a period of time when he was a mainstay in the Arsenal team and he was actually one of their most creative outlets. And that was in a side that I think by that point definitely had Ozil, maybe even had had Sanchez as well, so it goes to show that players can come back in, you know, Roy Keane had a career-threatening injury early on, so did Xavi, so what I'm saying is, if you look at times gone by, there have been a lot of really good players that have had major injury setbacks that have hampered their sort of appearance numbers over the course of not just one season, but maybe a couple, like it has done Reese, and they have come back, fulfilled their potential, and gone on to big things, and if you're Real Madrid, you're probably looking at Chelsea's recent injury record and thinking, yeah, well, we don't trust their back background staff to be able to do any sort of miracles with Reese and be able to help him recover and get fit and back on the pitch but we do back our staff and our medical team to be able to do that so with that being said of course Real Madrid would love a player like Reese James but here's the second part of the rumour and the bit that I definitely don't think is true and that is that Chelsea are open at the right price to sell him Reese James bullshit not having it. Reese is Chelsea through and through. You could look at the Mason Mount situation, you could say, well, could be a similar thing there. But again, there's so much context there, which makes this situation so much different. Reese is club captain. Reese is Chelsea through and through. And Reese is ready to pull his sleeves up and be a pivotal part in bringing Chelsea back to the successful times that we have seen. And even Reese in his short playing career so far has seen. And in the completely unlikely and hypothetical world that we did let Reese go, that pretty much sends out a signal to myself, to you lot, to the rest of the fan base and the whole footballing world that Chelsea are no longer the club 
that I still believe that we are. And for that reason, I'm just not willing to accept it. I'm not willing to entertain it. It ain't going to happen. So to summarise, the part about Real Madrid wanting him, I'm sure it's true. Who wouldn't want Reese James? The part about Chelsea being willing to sell him for the right price, I mean, the right price is a billion and maybe, but no, that ain't true either. Right. On to the next one. And that is that in the last week or two, we have heard rumours that apparently Enzo Fernandez wants to leave Chelsea. And I'm not just dismissing it and rubbishing it, but let me just tell you one thing. Nothing sells like a bit of negativity. And in the footballing world at the minute, I'm not feeling hard done by, but I'm telling you now, there is no club more suited to aim that negativity towards than Chelsea Football Club. A lot of people have got the knives out for us. A lot of people were very, very bitter when we had our takeover in 2004 and, you know, entered a really, really successful period. A lot of people forget that Chelsea were winning trophies long before that, a lot more than Spurs and any other club. So keep that in mind. But a lot of people didn't like it. We sort of came in and completely disrupted the establishment and no one really liked the fact that we had done that. So now that people sort of perceive it to all be doom and gloom at Stamford Bridge, every single journalist, every single media outlet cannot wait to hop on the negativity. And again, this is just one of those cases in my opinion. But let's for a second entertain the very unlikely slight, slight possibility that this could be true. Enzo's under a contract until 2032. And look, I understand that you never want to keep a player at the club who doesn't want to be there. But again, you've got to remember this media narrative that Chelsea are on a decline is exactly that, a media narrative. Because no one can literally draw the line and say conclusively, yeah, Chelsea are on a downward spiral until this season has played out. We haven't got off to the best start. Plenty of teams haven't got off to the best start in past and have picked up form. And I do believe we can do so. And I'll tell you, the group of people who will not be believing at all in the slightest that Chelsea are on a decline, and that is the players on the training pitch at Cobham. It's the background staff, and it's everyone involved in the club. Enzo Fernandez being one of them. He will be working hard on the training pitch at Cobham. He's one of the first names. In fact, no, he's not. He's the first name on the team sheet for Chelsea when Reese James isn't fit and available. Um, he's playing really well. He's going to see the personnel that have been brought in around him, and whether you rate the way Chelsea have done their transfer business or not, you can't deny that 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 is a signal of intent from the club that we do mean to go on to bigger and better things this season than we've had so far under Todd Bowley's ownership. And look, he's not really ever put a foot wrong on the pitch. His performances are getting better and better this season. Um, he's getting more confident, you know. The way he stepped up to take that penalty against West Ham at the time of it, I was sort of thinking, right, Nicholas Jackson might take it. Ben Chilwell might take it. Obviously, Raheem Sterling might take it. Enzo Fernandez took that ball. And albeit, I get it, he missed the penalty. But that showed me, mentality-wise, he's ready to become the man to drag Chelsea to three points in games week in week out so for that reason again it's another one I'm just rubbishing right on to the next one this one's not actually a rumor it's just a sort of slightly negative situation I wanted to put all the negative stuff in one video so it's not scattered across all of my videos so we can be nice and positive when it comes to Chelsea but what I want to talk about here is what is going on with Mikhailo Mudrik so I remember when Mudrik had that cameo appearance at Anfield against Liverpool and every single Chelsea fan were licking their lips at the prospect we had on our hands that have been snatched under the noses from Arsenal who, barring Kai Havertz, have rarely got their transfer business wrong of recent and we were believing that we had bought in a player who could add some real creativity and potency in front of goal for Chelsea. And so far... It just ain't happened, has it? And listen, I'm very much willing to give Mudrik time. He's a young player who's come into the club at its most turbulent time in a couple of decades from a war-torn country, and I completely respect that. But at close to 90 million quid, I get it, he does not put the price tag on himself. 20 appearances, 7 starts two assists. It doesn't make for great reading so far. And to counter what I'm saying here, I very much believe that Mikhailo Mudrik is the sort of player that if he just has one really, really exciting, good performance, that could be the fuse paper lit and he could just go from there. However, we do surely have to ask the question, why? Is he not a first team starter yet? Why have multiple managers had the opportunity to look at him on the training pitch and coming off the bench or even starting and he hasn't made himself irreplaceable under them? And why now has Mauricio Pochettino come into the club and he's opting to play Ben Chilwell 
at left wing, a position that surely £90 million worth of Mikhailo Mudrik should be making his own. Now, I can't tell you whether Mikhailo Mudrik is going to come good or not. From the bottom of my heart, I really, really hope he does. However, there is one slight thing, and I might be sort of shining the magnifying glass on it too much, that started to annoy me a little bit this week, or concern me, I should say. Um players and social media, it just doesn't really go well all the time. I have no doubt that social media is a fine tool to use if these players want to share stuff to do with their family, holiday pictures, you know, nights out with other teammates and stuff like that. But I really think that players should stay away from anything related to their performance on social media. You know, if they're having praise heaped on them, then yeah, fair enough, whatever. Um, and look, I'm not in the position, I'm not even any good at football, so I'm not in a position to be able to say, oh, they shouldn't do this, they shouldn't do that. But for what it's worth... I think when it's something performance related, they should stay away from it. And this week, we saw Mikhailo Mudrik like a post on Instagram um, from a Chelsea fan page, I think. And the post, in a nutshell, was basically calling for Mudrik to be starting more games and saying something along the lines, and I'm paraphrasing here, but it was something along the lines of how do we expect to see anything from Mikhailo Mudrik if he is not given a run of games? And then obviously, Mikhailo Mudrik's official Instagram account has liked that post. And I get it. It's not just Jaden Sancho levels, I completely understand that, and that's why I don't want to be harsh on him, but I just don't think it's a good idea to be doing stuff like that, let your football do the talking, don't do anything like that on social media, in my opinion, you know, elite level players, which, let's be honest, £90 million should be getting you an elite level player, whether he's ready for the here and now, it definitely should be, or one that has the potential to do that, elite level players will make themselves indispensable, and one thing that none of us can argue is Mudrik has not made himself indispensable to this team, and Mudrik was good at Shakhtar Donetsk, man, he made 44 appearances for them, 29 goal contributions, and I'm not saying that the Ukrainian Premier League is the same as our Premier League, it's obviously nowhere near, it's night and day, but what I would say is, Mudrik also played really well in the Champions League. I think it was 12 appearances. He had five goal contributions. So I'm not saying that those numbers should necessarily translate straight away into Chelsea's side. But if you look at that, he had a goal contribution in two out of every three games he was playing for Shakhtar Donetsk. And in a Chelsea shirt, it's more like, what, one in every 10 appearances he's made. And look, I really don't want to go in on Mikhailo Mudrik too hard. None of this is me bashing him. I've seen it go on in the media and I definitely, definitely... I'm not doing that. I'm not saying he's bad. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with him. I'm not saying we overspent on him just yet. I just really want it to happen now. I did honestly believe after seeing bits and pieces of him in pre-season and the record that Poch has with young players, especially ones that have maybe struggled a little bit, um, he's really put an arm around him and done really, really good jobs. And I am very aware that later on in the season that could come to flourishing and Mudrik could get a run in the team and really start to light Stamford Bridge up. But... I think the jury's very, very much still out at the minute. I am praying it comes good for him. I'm wishing him the best. I am not saying that I'm angry with Mikhailo Mudrik, anything like that. But I do think these questions need to be raised. And I think it would be a little bit disingenuous if we didn't ask these sort of questions at this point in time. Right, last story that I'm going to cover. And I've covered it last because, as I say, this could be debunked in a couple of hours when Chelsea's squad come out. But it's a story, again, various news outlets have been reporting. And that is that Chelsea are looking to banish Chalabar Matson and Kukurea from the squad for the fact that they didn't push through moves or they weren't receptive to the moves that Chelsea had on the table for them um, around transfer deadline day and definitely within this summer transfer window. Now, cards on the table here. You cannot punish Trev and Matson for not moving away from the club. Kukurea, he was fucking bang out of order there, you know. I think he should probably be punished. But the other two did nothing wrong. No, I'm joking. All three done nothing wrong, you know. Things can change very, very quickly in football. And just because you're not starting matches in the here and now, it doesn't mean that you're not going to be very soon in the future. A couple of injury suspensions can change everything. I'll tell you one thing, though, that is a little bit concerning. Myself, definitely you lot that watch my channel and a lot of Chelsea fans do not want to see Levi Colwell wasted at left back. We want to see him as a centre back. And if Pochettino had given the green light for these moves and has said that Matson and Kukurea could both move away in this transfer window, you better believe that he sees Colwell 
as a left back, or at least he plans to utilise him there in the absence of Ben Chilwell. So that's a little bit concerning. But yeah, anyway, um, the player's not leaving the club. I think good on him. I think it shows a good mentality. I think it shows that instead of just opting for the door when things aren't working, they're ready to say, no, I'm believing myself. I back myself. I back my ability over the players that you're picking ahead of me. And I'm going to show you on the training pitch why you need to be picking me. And I will break back into that first team. And it has happened so many times in the past. If every time a first team player got dropped and was out of the lineup, if every time they left um, the club, well, we wouldn't have seen some of the historic careers that we've seen in football in the past. So I think it's very short sighted to say, well, you're not playing, you should just go. Now, it is a shame because I think the writing's on the wall for Trev. I think that with Chalabar, there's not often much smoke or as much smoke as this without fire. And I think that the fact we're seeing him consistently linked with moves away and it looks like the club don't value him all that much, um, the, the value they hold him in outweighs the fact that you can get 100% profit from a sale on him means that we will see him move away at some point. I'll be gutted to see him leave, but it's a little bit like the Ruben Loftus-Cheek situation. If, let's say, Bayern Munich, who were linked a lot with Trevor Chalabar over the past window, if they come in for him and he can go there and play first-team football, Champions League football, win Bundesligas, you know, I'll be gutted from a Chelsea aspect, but from the player, uh, or for the player, I should say, I'll be very, very happy for Trevor Chalabar. Um, Kukurea, again, people think I'm bantering. Everyone knows on this channel I don't like Kukurea. I do think he should leave the club, but it's not, I don't wish him any ill feeling. I just think he should leave the club because I don't really see his fortunes turning around. Maybe it's the way we play. It's a stylistic thing, but I just don't really think Kukurea is ever going to break into our first team and be a starter in that left back position. We were told quite a lot, weren't we, that, oh, when you play a back three, he's quite good in left centre back role. He's not really, he's not that good. But I do think he could go away to another club, maybe back to Spain, a real Sociedad, someone like that and do a good job. As for Ian Matson. If we sell Ian Matson, that is a disaster. I completely understand that we're in a situation. People often get in my comments and go, well, you're in the situation you're in because you bought all these players and now you need to balance the books. I didn't buy them, mate. It might not have been my choice to buy all these players, okay? I'm not going to deny that I celebrated some of the incomings coming in, but, you know, go easy on me. Ian Matson, if we let him go, you know, it would be a disaster, in my opinion. We have got to keep this boy at all costs. He's massively versatile. You can't just look at him as a left-back option, a left-back option only, because we've seen him dotted all over that pitch, everywhere but in between the sticks. And I think Ian Matson's going to become a top, top player wherever he goes. Please, 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 let's hope that that is at Chelsea. I'll be gutted if we sell Matson. That would just take the piss. Anyway, see what I mean about a bit of a negative spin on this video. But the good news is, for what it's worth, I don't think a lot of these moves are going to happen. I don't think a lot of these rumours are true. So, But I did want to speak about them because I want to give back to you lot in terms of listening to what you lot want me to cover and then me trying to cover that as well as I possibly can. And obviously, they were some of the rumours and some of the stories that came out this week that a lot of you got in my inbox and messaged me about. So hopefully, I've cleared them up from my perspective, which, let's be honest, isn't the same in the club's perspective. So what's it all really mean? You've wasted your time watching this video, but thank you. Nah, I'm joking. Um, listen, today, 4 p.m., I'm going to be on the kickoff with Brian, Josh, the rest of the boys. It's going to be really good. We're going to be obviously watching the Everton against Arsenal match, but we will obviously be talking about Chelsea's big win that we have recorded by the time you're watching this video. Please don't come back to bite me in the ass Against Bournemouth away, I'm going to be giving my initial reaction. And then tomorrow on Monday, me and Josh will be getting in the studio. I will get it done. Come straight back here bang out the content get it out for you Monday late afternoon thank you all very much one last thing before I go if you've made it to the end of the video I haven't annoyed you that much that you've clicked off so why not hear more from me please do me a massive favour I checked the analytics page the other day a lot of you that are watching my videos aren't subscribed to the channel so let me just tell you how important it is that you do subscribe if you want me to carry on bringing you this sort of content you need to subscribe you really need to because it helps generate me the numbers on my videos and the watch time on my videos that I'm not going to lie we will result in me getting paid through Google AdSense and then allow me to be able to invest more of my time into this channel without my daughter going hungry. So please, 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 if you don't want my daughter to starve, no, I'm joking, no, it's a bit, bit deep. But yeah, please subscribe to the channel because um, I'm working really hard on getting it banged out for you. Anyway, people, I will see you all in the next one.